Chapter 18, Unmasked, Dr. Schultz, IQ 127. I was in my car heading back to the office, but something didn't sit well with me. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Expressing my appreciation to Mrs. Patterson had been the right thing to do. We all do had dodged a bullet thanks to her. She had saved the district an enormous amount of aggravation. Irate parents, frantic phone calls, summer plans changed, complaints to the school board, and maybe even to the state. It would have been the biggest screw-up of the year. Well, second biggest. Perhaps it was the academy itself that had unnerved me. That place always makes me uneasy. Don't get me wrong, gifted programs are an essential resource for a school district. The trouble with them is they attract so many know-it-alls. I stopped at a light, frowning. Something Kyle Osborne had said was still rattling around my head. Where's, couldn't recall the name, Dominic Donnelly, followed by, not on, on another one of his extended bathroom breaks. Extended bathroom breaks. That was the answer. It was common enough for an unmotivated student to kill time in the bathroom, hoping to make the day speed by, but not at the academy. There was no medi there were no meteor me <laughs> Okay, try again. There were no meteor <laughs> There were no mediocre students there. Tongue twister. And if one of our best and brightest had decided to squander his placement, he should step aside in favor of someone who wouldn't waste the opportunity. As soon as I was back at my desk, I called Brian Del Rio. Maybe he could identify this missing kid. He was out of the office. Page him, please, I said, and sat back to wait. As my eyes passed over the screensaver on my computer, it occurred to me that Brian might not be my only source of information about that class. There was also Noah's YouTube channel. I winced. Eucalicious. Not the easiest name to spell, but I found it soon enough and stared in amazement. 114 featured videos? Noah had the highest IQ in the history of the district, but from the looks of this, all the boy did was run around with a flip camera. My attention was instantly drawn to Tin Man Metallica Square Pants Exposes Teacher's Underwear. God bless America, it had already been viewed more than 6,000 times. That wasn't good. What could be a bigger screw-up than a lawsuit over the misconduct of a robot? I clicked on the link, and the clip began to play. It showed Maria Bevilacqua laying papers on a semicircle of desks. As she moved, Tin Man rolled into the picture, falling in behind her, matching her pace almost perfectly. The forklift mechanism began to rise, catching the hem of her full peasant skirt. Up it went until there was more of Ms. Bevilacqua on the screen than I cared to see. Judging by the giggles in the background of the video, the last person to notice this was Maria herself. When she finally did, the screech prompted my computer to warn me that my speakers were in danger. And right before the clip ended, the camera swung around and focused on the student who was operating the robot's joystick controller. My blood turned to ice in my veins. It was... It was. I had a vision of an upturned face staring wide-eyed into the wreckage of the Hardcastle gym. That nameless face was the first thing I saw every morning and the last thing I saw at night. It had started my wildest nightmares, taunting me, driving me crazy for weeks. Dominic, Donnelly, Donovan, it was him.